Take that, you sleeping Goomba. Oh, I'm on. Okay, um, sound check. One, two, three, four, five. Now, if your name is Mike, please stand up. Thank you. Thank you. That completes the mic check. Hello and welcome to Scotia Gamer. As promised in my Switch buying guide, today we're going to be talking about Switch docks, chargers, and USB hubs. We'll also be unboxing and testing this device, the Genki Covert Dock for Nintendo Switch, as well as other devices. But before we get to the unboxing, I'd like to talk about what decisions led me to buying this device and other options that I considered. Now, first and foremost, before we go any further, we do have to address the elephant in the room. And no, once again, I don't mean Elephant Mario from Super Mario Wonder. Any use of third-party devices against a system like the Nintendo Switch does carry an inherent risk of use. These devices aren't quality controlled or tested directly by Nintendo, so you're really putting your device in the hands of other manufacturers and their quality control process to determine if the device is safe. Devices that are officially licensed by Nintendo, but maybe not made directly by them, should be fine as well, but in all cases you're going to find many unlicensed accessories as well. And whether or not you should use them is going to be a decision you need to make with regard to how much you're willing to risk your own hardware. Now a third-party controller or headset is one thing, but any time you're talking about pulling power off the mains and sending it into a circuit board, you really need to make sure that everyone is following the specs correctly and has good quality control. In particular, some unlicensed docks or USB hubs with power and HDMI out have been known in the past to brick switches or render them unusable. And if you do any research on this at all, you'll find many warnings against using them. And to be honest, you should pay attention to those warnings. You might be able to get your switch repaired if that happens, but maybe not, and at your own expense. So I'm not endorsing the use of these accessories but I want to explain why it's really easy to see these as tempting alternatives to the Switch dock and maybe give you some pros or cons of whether or not you should consider using them. So everything we discuss here is really a comparison to the traditional dock. So let's take an in-depth look at it and understand exactly what we're comparing the other options to. It's hard to believe that the Switch is almost seven years old now, but even for 2017, the dock was really a masterpiece of design from Nintendo. It was intuitive for kids and adults to use alike, and it looked really nice as part of your entertainment center. And most importantly, it just worked. After one or two tries of aligning the Switch with the USB port, your muscle memory quickly took over and you didn't even have to think about it. There were some early reports that the slide mechanism could scratch the screen, which is one of the reasons I slapped on a screen protector as early as possible, but I also happened to be very clumsy. Other consoles did have TV out, the PSP for instance, but not quite as easy to use and in that seamless of a form factor. I did lament a little that the dock wasn't wireless. I really thought that's where they were going following on from the Wii U, which had a wireless display. But I guess the technology just wasn't there yet or not cost effective enough to do on the Switch. And that is something I think would be cool to see on the Switch too, but who knows. The original dock only really has two problems. First and foremost, it's quite large. I remember how the original Wii marketing campaign illustrated the ability to take your Wii remotes to other people's houses and guest sync them with their Wii so that you could have multiple controllers. You could even store your Mii on the Wii remote directly. And I think that's where they were going with the Switch dock. If you were taking your Switch elsewhere, you would already have a dock at your destination and could just dock it and start playing immediately. Now, of course, if not, you can still transport your dock. In my Switch buying guide, I illustrated the importance of using a carrying case when moving your Switch. Of course, if you want to transport the dock, you'll need a bigger case to transport it, unless you're just moving it to another TV in the house. If you are moving it to another location, you can get a case like this. This will house my original carrying case as well as the dock and some extra controllers if you're careful, but you'll want to make sure you don't bend those analog sticks. And you still have to disconnect the power brick from the mains and bring your HDMI cord and so on. So all in all, it's not the easiest experience to move your Switch to another location and have a TV connection there as you still have to pack up and bring the Switch dock with you. 
So if you're going to frequently move your Switch between two different locations, which is a pretty common use case for many families, it's very tempting to just pick up another dock. And that brings me to the second downside of the official dock, which is that it's kind of expensive. To get an OEM Switch dock in Canada with a power adapter and HDMI cord will easily run you up to $150 from an online retailer like Amazon. You'll actually have much better luck just buying an extra dock from Nintendo. Nintendo will sell you a dock by itself for $75, and you can even get a refurbished one for $51. Neither of these include a power adapter, though, which will set you back $40 for a brand new one or $25 for a refurbished model. And of course, you can pick up a HDMI cable from just about anywhere, including this retractable one I have here for easy transport. So in the cheapest form, you're looking at about $80 for a refurbished dock kit from Nintendo or $115 for a new one, which isn't too bad and still cheaper than looking for a complete kit, but still kind of expensive. And that's fine if you only need to use your Switch in two places, but it doesn't really solve that issue of portability. If you're more of a road warrior and travel frequently, but still want that docked option, it's more cumbersome to deal with. And although it's a minor problem, the standard dock doesn't really have much for USB ports either, with only two ports on the side and that one in the back. And if you have an OLED dock, you lose the back port for a dedicated Ethernet connection. This could be a problem if you use a lot of USB peripherals like I do. And again, although this isn't really a knock against the dock, it is basically a one-trick pony because that's how it's designed. It works with the Switch and the OLED Switch, and, well, that's pretty much it. Many devices support a HDMI or DisplayPort connection over USB-C, and it's pretty much a universal standard. But the Switch dock does the dock, and that's it. And it's not really fair to give that as a con because they're not in the business of making equipment to support a myriad of devices. Now, if you only care about the portability factor, but not the multiple device factor, there are manufacturers that produce third-party shells for the Switch dock circuit board. So depending on your confidence and skill level, you could take the original dock and put it in a smaller case for portability, and there are tutorials out there which can help you do that. Of course, that's not to say it's entirely risk-free, as you need to be able to do it safely. So it's easy to see the allure of having a universal all-in-one device that will handle your Switch, your laptop, your phone, and so on. And those are the options we're going to take a look at here. So as I mentioned, the official Switch dock is usually your best choice in most cases, other than the fact that it's a little expensive and hard to move. The good news is that you can go on Amazon and you can find all kinds of third-party hubs that claim to be compatible with the Nintendo Switch. The bad news is that you can go on Amazon and you can find all kinds of third-party hubs that claim to be compatible with the Nintendo Switch. So here's a sample of USB hubs from Amazon that all advertise Switch compatibility. And if you want to get one of these, make sure you find one that explicitly mentions Switch support, because you'll also find many USB hubs with HDMI out that are intended for other devices and won't work on the Switch at all. And you can find these devices for around $30, which again is much cheaper than an official dock. I've tested all of these against my Switch, but again, that's purely anecdotal and not hard evidence that these devices are always going to be safe to use. So make sure you try and research any device you're considering as much as you can, read reviews, find out about the manufacturer, and what, if any, support they may provide if it damages your device. And ultimately, you may just decide the official dock, or at least the smaller shell for the official dock, is the only way to go. To be fair, the official dock is the one that I use 99% of the time. It's connected to my main TV, which is primarily where my Switch is docked and played, and it's where the Switch lives whenever it's not in use. You might recognize this hub from the Weird Adapters video I did. At the time, I was just using it as a USB hub, not a USB power HDMI hub, but it does work in that way as well. One thing I like about this adapter is how it has a separate USB power in, so you can use it in either powered or unpowered mode. In this case, we'll connect the official switch power adapter to the hub and then connect HDMI.
and you'll see that the image appears on the screen like we would expect. Now, I'm just using my laptop and a HDMI capture card as a stand-in for the TV, just because it fits in the frame better. And of course, we can still take off the Joy-Cons. And continue to play as we normally would. And pretty much all of these adapters work the same way. So for example, here's another one that also has HDMI, power input, and USB. And you'll see that I can plug this one into power, plug it into HDMI, and then connect it to the switch. And there you go. Now, these ones use separate power and HDMI connections, but you can also find ones that have the HDMI cord built right into it, and that might be a good option for you as well. I personally prefer having the retractable HDMI cord for easy portability. This hub is probably the only extra one that I use semi-regularly, and that's because it also happens to be the hub that I use for connecting my laptop to my monitor, as well as its USB devices. So if I have an opportunity to play, but the main TV is unavailable, I may connect it to this hub for a little while and a quick play session before returning it to the main dock. And these devices work just fine with my phone as well. One problem that does come up with these third-party hubs, I find, is that sometimes the image doesn't show up on the screen right away when you connect them. And I assume that's a result of whatever handshaking they're doing with the switch not quite working right. Usually when that happens, I just have to disconnect it and then reconnect it, and it will come back. On occasion, I have had to power cycle the switch or the hub, so it's a minor inconvenience, but something to be aware of and not an issue that I've ever seen with the official dock. Without further ado, let's finally talk about and unbox the Genki Covert Dock. So again, why the Genki Dock? Well, the reason I bought this was really searching for that all-in-one travel device that I could use to dock my switch, but also as a quick and compact device for a USB to HDMI adapter that could also charge the device while it was using it. After all, a simple USB-C to HDMI cable isn't going to charge it unless you were using wireless charging. Secondly, Genki is aware of and has studied the switch bricking problem and specifically designed the dock to avoid issues the previous docks have had. Now that doesn't mean it's perfect, after all it's still not officially licensed or officially tested, and an unexpected software update could still cause an issue, but it's at least nice to know that something like that has been acknowledged by the manufacturer, and you can look up reports online of any reported issue with these docks and see how they've been handled. So let's go ahead and open it up. And it comes with an adorable little sticker here. As well as a user manual. And let's get into the content of the box. So we'll set that aside for a minute. That's probably the USB cable. And let's take a look at the device itself. And here it is. And you can really see just how small and compact this is. We can compare it in size here to the official Switch charger, and you can see just how small it actually is. It's quite a bit smaller than the brick that comes with the Nintendo Switch for charging. And if we look, we can see the HDMI, the USB port, and that USB-C connection. I also like that it has these retractable prongs here that plug into the outlet, so that's going to improve with portability as well, and that's not something you'll see on the official Switch charger. 
And I believe if you're a traveler that you can get adapters which will allow these to connect to different sorts of power lines across the world. So that's useful as well. Let's take a look at the USB-C cable included with the dock. And you'll see that it has an L-shaped connector on one end, as well as a regular connector on the other. I'm not sure if there's an intent as to which one gets plugged into the switch, but I'd probably be plugging the L-shaped connector into the switch and that connector into the actual dock. So let's go ahead and try this dock out. So I have the Genki Covert Dock connected to the power lines here, and you'll see that I have the HDMI cord running into my HDMI capture card, just like I did, as well as their USB-C cord, uh, which has a little Velcro strap on here, which is nice, coming out of it, about to be plugged into the switch. So let's go ahead and connect that, move my mouse cursor out of the way, and we'll see that the switch comes up on the laptop screen exactly as we would expect, and we can go ahead and continue playing. Genki also makes a mini version of the dock without the USB-A port, if that's something you need. But again, let's say that I'm at a hotel somewhere and their cable kind of sucks, so I just want to stream something quickly that I can easily watch from my phone. And I have an old phone here that we can demo with, so let's go ahead and try that. So let's connect the phone to the Genki dock. And it's able to start charging and we can get a HDMI connection out to our device. Or if you would prefer, you could use Samsung uh, Dex mode if that would be an option for you as well. And with the small size of the Genki dock, it fits really neatly in my portable charging kit, along with my other devices and chargers, so it gives you a lot of freedom while traveling. Another device the Genki supports is the Steam Deck. And I don't have one here to show or test it, but again, if you were traveling and wanted a way to dock your Steam Deck and your Switch, this could serve as that dock as well as a charger for both devices. But there is one thing I want to point out, and that's that the Genki dock is a 30 watt charger. They also make a mini version of it, which omits the USB-A port. If you don't need it, that could be a good option. But it's only a 20 watt charger, while the original Switch charger is 39 watts and the Steam Deck charger is 45. So I have seen some reports that even though you can use this with a Steam Deck, you might get a low power warning when you try to use it on a Steam Deck, depending on the power profile of the game that you are playing. So to rectify that, Genki has announced a Covert Dock 2, which actually has 45 watts of charging, which matches what you'll find on the Steam Deck. Now, I've pre-ordered a Genki Covert Dock 2, but I'm still waiting on it to be delivered. So rest assured, when I get it, I'll be unboxing it on the channel, as well as testing it out and comparing it to the original Genki Covert Dock. Now, there is one more thing you have to consider with these alternatives, and that's airflow. I talked about how the Switch dock was really smartly designed, and if you look at the back, you'll see that there are vents on the Switch in order to help keep it cool. And if you look at the Switch dock, you can see that it actually has a cutout for that airflow. So if you're trying to use one of these other docks, you'll want to make sure that you use it in a way such that the airflow isn't obstructed and that the device can remain cool. So to recap, the only safe device that you can really recommend for the Switch to use as a dock is the official one. It's a little big, but it's built for the Switch and it just works. If you decide that portability and modularity is worth a little risk, there are alternatives that you can look into, including ones that have been specifically made to try to avoid issues that other docks have run into in the past. And that's something that you can consider as well. That's it for me. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it informative, whichever route you decide to take. 
please consider liking and subscribing for more great gaming content in the future. And if your name is Mike, you may now sit down. This is Scotia Gamer. Have a great day and game on.